Eric Darling here with Darling Data. Look at that handsome logo. And I said that handsome head. Look at, that. Look at all that handsome floating around in here. Uh, and we're going to try something a little bit different in these videos. Um, because I, I, I did notice that when uh, I, I told people to do stuff in the beginning of the video, uh, they did stuff. So we're going we're gonna to start off with, with, with my, my, my appeals. <laughs> Uh, at the beginning of the videos rather than at, just at the very end of the videos where most people have stopped watching because they've got what they've needed from me and um, Usually those those transactions uh, don't end quite as well And also it's my channel and I can do what I want <laughs> When you get your channel you can do what you want in today's video uh, We're going to be talking about uh, performance tuning top and percent queries, which is something you might not have to do very often in your career, but when you do have to do it, it can be quite an excruciating process, and we're going to talk about how you can make it much easier on yourself. So, about my channel. All of this content is free, and I'd like to keep it that way without commercials and other, and other crap. Uh, so, uh, thank you, Intel, for chiming in about the driver, timeout. Great. Intel's not doing so great lately. Their, their, their CEO was, was preying on Twitter. The other day, his stocks are melting down, so <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna we'll just leave Intel be for a little bit. Uh, but yeah, uh, all of this content is free. Uh, I like likes, I like comments, and I like subscribers. It's good way. To, it's a good way for me to know if I'm doing a good job or not. Uh, if you feel like uh, supporting my channel, uh, you, there are like low cost memberships where it's like a few bucks a month. If you just feel like saying thank you, you don't have to. But if you're feeling generous, go for it. Um, I haven't really promoted this much because I don't really know what I want to do with it just yet. Um, I, I think that ideally I would like to turn it into um, some some more uh, sort of like private uh, one on well not maybe not one on one but like private group stuff uh, for people who uh, who donate at higher levels. We'll see where it goes. Um, I'm, I'm not I'm not I haven't quite fleshed it all out yet, and I don't know when I'm going to. So. Um, We'll, 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 we'll get to that when we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Hopefully, hopefully, and hopefully in a nice car. Uh, I am a consultant. I do SQL Server performance tuning. Uh, if you need health checks, performance analysis, hands-on tuning, you have a SQL Server emergency, or you want to get your developers trained so that they don't stink at SQL Server anymore, you can hire me. I do those things for money. It, it's, 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 that's a good transaction for most people. Uh, I also sell training. Uh, if you go to uh, training.ericdarling.com, there's also a link in the, in the show notes for, for this stuff. Uh, you can get t over 24 hours of streaming SQL Server performance tuning content uh, at the beginner, intermediate, and advanced levels. And if you pay enough attention to this video uh, or click the link in the show notes, you can get 75% off everything with the discount code SPRINGCLEANING. Uh, as far as upcoming events goes, where you can catch me live and in person, uh, Friday, September 6th of t the, uh, this, this current year, 2024, uh, I will be at Data, Data Saturday Dallas. Uh, I have a pre-con uh, on, the, on the Friday, and then I'm speaking at the regular event on Saturday. And of course, November 4th and 5th, I will be at Past Data Summit. Uh, this slide has a lot of white space on it, and I haven't quite figured out how I want to fill that yet. Um, it's also possible that after September 6th, this slide will have a lot more white space on it because I will be purely focused on, on being prepared for Past Data Summit. So uh, if, you, if you feel like seeing me in, in, in the flesh, as they say, uh, these are, those are two good ways to catch me there. And now, 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 we, have, now we, have, we have gone black, which is a lot of the opposite problem of white space. And um, we're going to move on and cover the, 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 the subject of our video. And, uh, well, let me, let me actually close this. The query plans, are, we're, we're going we're gonna to get to the query plans. But uh, I, have, uh, I have a couple indexes on the post table. Um, I have one that supports what we're searching for and what we're ordering by. And I have one that just supports what we're searching for. Because I want to show you two sort of different query plans uh, related to that. Now, here's the, here's the store procedure that I have that is looking for the top percent uh, top whatever percent we plug in rows for a specific post ID. Um, you know, this is probably is not, again, this is not the most common uh, routine for returning rows out to a client, 
but I do see a lot of people use it uh, just because, you know, sometimes, uh, you know, if, if it's, it's, it becomes kind of wonky if you're like, yeah, give me the top thousand rows, but a thousand rows don't exist. So some people prefer to uh, return a non-hard-coded number or a non-default number. They want to return a number of rows based on the population of data that they've got. So, you know, it's, it's a somewhat, you know, somewhat less common thing to do, but it can also be a little bit less um, confusing when you're like, yeah, give me the top thousand rows, but again, the thousand rows don't come back. So I've got this query set up in a few different ways. Four to be precise. Four. We'll, we'll, we'll count them. Number one, just a regular top n percent query to start things off right here. Uh, where we're just doing what we're doing with no interference. Uh, and then below it, I have a query hinted to use the, the index that supports both the searching and the sorting here. And then the third query uh, is hinted to use the index that just supports the searching. And then finally, I have a query at the bottom where this is all expressed without um, any parameters. This is expressed with literal values because what I wanted to show you is that this is not an effect of uh, the top percent being parameterized. This is just what top per percent query plans tend to look like. Uh, below this, I'm going to show you a way to make these go way faster. Okay, so coming back to the query plans, I think pot potentially my new least favorite uh, trail of query plan operators is a uh, sort, which of course is, is parallel because we right next to it, we have a gather streams. And then that goes into an eager table spool. And the reason why I pre-ran all of these is you can, you can pro probably guess by looking at some of the numbers here, th these are not the fastest boys in the world. No, these are, these are very slow boys. Uh, this one takes nearly a full minute. Uh, this one down here takes 30 seconds, which is an improvement by, by nearly half, <laughs> but uh, still, still not great. Still not what I would call fast. Uh, and then, you know, down, down here, this is, I think the, the reason why I wanted to have the, um, the parallel, or rather I wanted to have a, an index where, uh, both, uh, search and ordering is supported and where only search is supported uh, is because it, I think that I think the, the query plan difference here is interesting. And the reason why I think the query plan difference here is interesting is, of course, because uh, when you have a nested loops join, uh, SQL Server only considers the stuff uh, over here for, um, you know, how, how much faster it would be to execute the, 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 the nested loops in parallel, because parallel nested loops don't operate the way, uh, don't op operate, don't always operate cooperatively the way that like parallel merge or hash joins do. Parallel merge or hash joins, you're probably very used to seeing those where on the inner side of the join, uh, the number of rows in the table is split up equally uh, or split up hopefully as close to equally as possible amongst the dot threads in the query. With a parallel nested loops join, you're really running dot copies of the nested loops on the inner side, so every thread is going to have every row on it. There are a couple caveats to that that are too, too involved to cover here, but just in general, when you see parallel nested loops, you should know that you're dealing probably with a lot more rows than you think you are per thread. So this one is interesting because this query where we have the search and the, and the sorting supported does not get a parallel plan. This gets a serial plan, which runs for about 30 seconds, which again is, is you know, twice as fast as any parallel plan that we have in here. The, the one up top, you know, fully parallel plan. Granted, we scanned the clustered index, right? We have kind of a nasty sort here. But even like going from the sort to the gather streams, that goes from 18 seconds, jumps up to 35 seconds, and then going into the eager, uh, the eager table spool, that jumps up to 58 seconds. So really awful sort of like chunks of time spent waiting for those things to, those, those operators to process rows around. The, the serial plan where we lose the sort, things do improve, but not, I mean, they, they improve and they improve dramatically. They improve their, this query is twice as fast as the other one, but it's still slow as hell. 
right? And a lot of the, the time, you know, we had a full 18 seconds getting into there. And then, you know, this, this seek to key lookup thing is not a, a great scenario. We spend about almost 11 seconds just in these, these three operators alone. So that's, that's also unfortunate. But what I thought what was really interesting was when we flip back to the parallel plan with the sort in it, we go from about three seconds here. This jumps up to 11 seconds here. So we spend, you know, just about eight seconds, you know, in the sort. And then from there, it's another f like 15 seconds in the gather streams. And then a whole bunch of time in, in, in the eager index. Well, so this, that series of operators is just real unfortunate in these plans. And then, of course, the one way down at the bottom is uh is, this is just the one with the literal values which is pretty much an exact duplicate of the one up at top with the parameter uh it's a few seconds faster it's about seven seconds faster i think for you know i don't know whatever reason uh I, I didn't really dig into why this one's seven seconds faster it's not really pertinent uh mainly what i wanted to show you here was just that you get the same plan shape with, with using literal values as parameterized values so one way to uh, tune these queries and to get much faster performance out of them is uh, to use, uh, you, can, you can use either a common table expression or a derived table, whatever you want to do. Uh, I, I use the common table expression here because I like, I like to, you know, give, I like to give equal opportunity uh, to queries where it, it, it doesn't make a difference. And inside of the common table expression, what I'm doing is I'm calculating the percentage uh, using the top parameter and uh, multiplying that by the count of records that we get from when we look at that. And then you divide that by 100 to get the, the percentage that you're looking for, right? So this, this piece of math right here will get us the top percent that we care about. And then what I'm doing down here is I am saying, uh, I am selecting, so uh, that, that PCT table where I get the percent, that's a pretty short shorthand abbreviation for percent uh i'm cross applying to the post table and i'm getting the top uh calculation from up from up here so this this records column this is the one that uh this is the percentage this is the number of rows that we need to get as that percentage and i'm passing that percentage in here and i'm doing the same thing in here with the where clause and i'm doing the same thing here with the ordering and then one thing that um uh you know you you always need to be thinking about is that SQL Server does not guarantee ordering unless you tell it what to order by. So we're even so just getting the select top percent in here ordered by creation date descending is not enough to guarantee that the external uh, provided results, uh, the presentation, the presented results will also be ordered correctly. So we have another order by out here to take care of that. And the nice thing is that when we create this store procedure, or rather when we alter that store procedure to use the new one. And I'm, I'm going to execute this the exact same way. Top one, uh, per, uh, post type ID equals one. I'm going to execute this the exact same way. And this is going to be a lot faster. You'll notice that, I mean, a lot of the time was spent returning the 60,000 rows out. The query itself actually finishes in about half a second. So it's very, uh, very easy and convenient for us to seek to the, um, the rows we care about in here. Uh, to uh, aggregate, you know, do, the, do our count to get generate a number, and then inside the top here to get the 60,003 rows, which is the top 1%. All sounds great. Everything's good here. Where this, this pattern will generally apply well uh, to, uh, to um, most executions. As the top, as the percentage gets higher, for a lot of rows, performance is going to suffer. So if we crank this up to, let's say, the top 20%, I mean, on top of the fact that, you know, we're going to spend more time sending rows out to SSMS because, you know, 20% of 6 million is a, you know, fairly, fairly high number. Uh, like, this is going to slow things down. But most of the slowdown is returning the results to SQL Server Management Studio. You know, of course, I could dump it into a temp table and, you know, um, you know, return, maybe ignore it or return the results from there. But a lot of the time in here is just time spent returning the results. If you look at the actual query itself, the actual query itself finished executing in about three seconds flat. Uh, we spent a whole bunch of extra time returning 1.2 million rows out. 
Now, there is a, a slight downside to this in that the top is always going to estimate 100 rows. But as long as your indexes are set up to support the seeking and ordering that you care about for the top n percent, that that that's not going to hurt you too much. Where it would hurt you is if you didn't have the sorting element in the, uh, assigned in the index, and you had a sort operator that had very variable like memory grant requ requirements. You know, obviously sorting sixty thousand rows is a lot different than sorting one point two million rows as far as how much memory you'd need. Maybe if you'd want a parallel plan for that stuff, things along those lines. But generally, this pattern works out way better. Uh, like up until a very, very high row count. And even then, so like, let, let's, let's be a little bit honest about like high row count return queries. This thing dumped out 1.2 million rows, right? That's 20% of the 6 million something rows that are in the, that, that, are, that have a post type ID of one in the post table. Cool. If you are returning 1.2 million rows to anybody with the exception of like exporting to a Excel file or some other kind of file format, uh, ain't no one looking at 1.2 million rows. No one is going to go through all 1.2 million rows and do something with them aside from like copy and paste them to another thing to make, the, make those results more portable. Most likely an Excel file. Most, you know, if, if, if you dump out 1.2 million rows to an end user, they're not going to do anything with 1.2 million rows in your application results, most likely. They're going to take those 1.2 million rows, paste them into Excel, do whatever you know, goofy Excel stuff people do in Excel, and then, and then you know, use that for whatever they're building, right? Whether it's a chart, graph, something, VLOOKUP, I don't know. Whatever people do in Excel, it's crazy. Um, so returning 1.2 million rows out to SQL Server Management Studio or an application is generally not something, like if you're, if you're at the point where you're doing that, I have questions uh, that you can pay me to, that, that I can pay, you can pay me to ask you <laughs> about just what the hell you're doing or what the hell an end user would be doing with that much data getting returned to them because uh, most of the time uh, they're, they're not gonna get to the end of 1.2 million results and be like, hmm, I'm satisfied now. They're, not, they're just not. Right? They're, they're, that's, that's generally not the way most human brains work, especially in this day and age where uh, everyone is in therapy and medicated and has some sort of uh, neurodivergency that prevents them from paying attention to 1.2 million rows of anything. Right? Or that's like maybe that, maybe that's just basic human sanity. Like 1.2 million rows. Um, I'm not. I'm not looking at all that. <laughs> You, you, you would forget everything you saw, right? There's, there's, no, there's generally no point to that. So, you know, I think for most people doing top end percent things, um, you're going to be pretty safe with this, with this setup because you will hopefully never be returning, uh, you know, millions and millions of rows, especially to SQL Server Management Studio, which has a notoriously difficult time of ingesting, displaying, formatting, all that stuff in a, in a quickly. It's, it's not... It's not, it's not a fast boy for that. So anyway, uh, thank you for watching. I hope you learned something. Hope you enjoyed yourselves. I hope that uh, you paid attention at, early in the video where I, I talked about liking and subscribing and hiring me and, and buying training and, and, and all the other stuff. Uh, because, 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 you know, I, I, I like to have friends when I, when I record these and uh, I don't, I don't like to feel lonely. So uh, anyway, uh, thank you for watching. Uh, I'm going to pr prepare one of these other demos. You see I have many tabs open up at the top there. I'm going to go prepare one of those to record. And uh, th then I'm, I'm going to change one slide in the deck and I'm going to do that all again. So anyway, <laughs> it's my channel. <laughs> Remember, <laughs> do what I want. Okay, cool. Thank you.